Hey, good morning. Catalina Fiddles Church, Pastor John Stone here with our devotions from Acts. Come to a rather long part of, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, long story in Acts 16 about Paul and Silas being put in prison. Let's look at it over two weeks. Just the first week, uh, beginning in verse 16 of chapter 16, says, Once when Paul and Silas were going to the place of prayer, uh, they were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. So notice that this evil spirit, or this spirit, was accurately predicting the future and was telling people, Hey, these guys are telling you how to be saved. It's amazing. She kept this up for many days. And can you imagine her walking around behind you screaming in the mall and at the gas station and at fries and all that. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized they'd lost, that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar, by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders to put them in the inner cell and he put them in their inner cell and fastened their feet in the stock. So there's more to the story, but you know, what do we learn uh, from just this first part? Uh, a couple of things. First of all, these, these owners of this girl, I mean, she was obviously a slave, were real happy when she followed Paul and was screaming it out and that brought attention to her and brought attention to them. As long as they made money, uh, they were happy to support Paul and Silas. But when Paul and Silas turned and rebuked her, and rebuked that spirit, and they lost money. They turned on them, and look, they suddenly became um, they became racist. These men are Jews, not these men are Christians, not these men are outsiders. These men are Jews. Racism shows up immediately because they've lost their way of making money. I, I just it's an interesting dynamic. I don't think that's exactly the lesson for us. But instead of saying, "Hey, they cast out the spirit," they're really Christians. They own the way of salvation, which is what their girl had been telling them. These are Jews, and they're throwing our city into an uproar, which they were not throwing the city into an uproar. But I think the thing that we can see in this passage and learn is that following Christ always cost us. Paul and Silas were popular because they were, they were creating probably a crowd that wanted to hear from them and know, from, know what was going on, and people were making money on that. And the minute they sort of in a gospel sense, freed this slave woman of the sl of the demon, and these people lost the ability to raise money, they were turned on. It, it cost us something to follow Christ. And Paul and Silas went from being popular to being unpopular because they did gospel ministry. They loved with compassion this girl. They set her free from a demon that had her captured. The second thing we see, though, is that it cost us money to follow Jesus. You know, the people who owned the slave girl weren't Christians, and, and up to this point, they don't become Christians. When the gospel comes forth, it changes people's view of money. And people go from needing to make money to have an identity to needing to give money away to have an identity. And what I mean by that is, and I, I recognize that that's not obviously what this passage is teaching us, but the gospel impacts the way we do business. It impacts the way we treat people. Whether we're uh, staying home with our kids or out working or whether we're running a business or working for someone else, when we follow Jesus Christ, the priority in our ministry, the priority in our lives becomes how do we treat people, not how do we make money. Money becomes a secondary issue for the Christians. Paul, and this is going to happen again, they go to another city and it it's turned upside down because the merchants are afraid that they're going to lose money. Because when the gospel comes in, it always costs us something. It obviously costs us our time as we begin to give ourselves away to love our neighbor, to love our family, to love our community. It costs us 
Um, our identity as we change from being who we are to being in Christ, but it costs us money. Following Jesus always cost us money. In this case, it cost the merchants money. It cost Paul and Silas their freedom as they go into jail and are put into jail there. But it also changes the way we think about money. It's very hard for Western Christians to admit that what Jesus says about money is not what capitalism or free market or the West says about money. The West, and that's where we live, has said that money's everything, that it's power, that it's prestige, that it's identity. And Christianity comes along and says money doesn't matter. Money is a tool that we use to serve God. We don't let it use us. And it changes our view of money. And we see it changing these guys' income. We see it changing Paul and Silas's freedom. I just want you to think today that as, as you follow Christ, it, it should be costing you something. It should, the presence of Jesus in your life and in your business and your family should be changing you. The way you think about money, the way you think about time, the way you think about freedom. Look forward to the rest of the story. This is a great story. We're just getting actually to some of the more interesting parts of it where we stopped. Look forward to being with you next week. Hope you have a great Tuesday uh, and look forward to seeing you either online or in person at Church Sunday or whenever we might bump into you. Uh, Y'all have a great week.